This is Primitive Outfitting, and you are listening to The Gritty Bowman. Bam, chicken. Wow, wow. Wow. Nice. <laughs> and I'm not standing on my high horse saying I shoot a self bow, because there's no way in hell I'm shooting a self bow. When I say that, I mean that in a good Christian way. As far as Cecil goes with me, I mean, I can really give a sh- crap about that lion too much. And all I was looking at was the tip of Aaron's arrow. <laughs> and it was like this and this, and then it was kind of shaking, and then it went boom, solid like a rock. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and he's like, I get to know if you hit anything or not. You never really show excitement because I don't. I just, I'm yeah. kind of always mellow. And this thing, very to jerk a tear. I was running around like an idiot. <laughs> Woo. You know, if you ever talk to anybody from Africa, they're all about hunting lions because they eat people. Yeah. The compound, I have total confidence. With this thing, I'm like, hey, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but the way that America works, we're so soft, like softer than baby. <laughs> all of us, basically. The uh, the shooting airs, I'm going to call it Matrix Effect. <laughs> I panicked. Um, we're going to knock out today... Um, 15 steps of mm-hmm. do's and don'ts of photography and videography. But, you know, they, they, they actually want to see the truth and uh, you can't handle the truth. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no, there, there's all this, this age old debate on whether you show the fact that you missed or you show an animal wounded that you don't find. Right. Yeah. Yeah, which I hate that debate because um, within reason, keeping mm-hmm. the hunting community looking good, I think the, Someone not stating some someone basically having an appearance that they never miss. Um, I, I think is phony. Which we promote. We we try to present it like it happened as much as possible. Someone basically having the um, I never shoot past thirty, but they shoot to uh, eighty or I don't know whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, all right, folks, welcome to the Gritty Bowman Podcast. Aaron and I are back. We actually haven't really gone anywhere since the last podcast. I haven't even had, I haven't even had to pee. <laughs> so uh, we are at Kifaru headquarters in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and um, we're going to knock out today um, 15 steps mm-hmm. of do's and don'ts of photography and videography, basically. Yep. So one thing I would say real quick, Brian and I both progressed through photography and video- videography not too much. It's different paths mm-hmm. other than I'm taking photos. Taking video. I, I started with a crappy point and shoot, which we all have. And then I got a little better camera, learned more, a little better camera, learned more and just went up and up and up to where now, um, thankfully Kefaru and Gritty Bowman supply my camera issues, but I have great photography and videography gear. I don't use the video <coughs> portion. You're in the same boat. Yep. You're on an a seven S two, you know, great stuff. During all of that, I have learned a lot of what not to do. Um, <laughs> Me too. Uh, and I, I've, I've, yeah, uh, my, my thoughts on camera gear and audio gear, um, from where they were three years ago, two years ago, it's, it's like it changes every year and the equipment has come a long way, but so is my budget. So keep that in mind. I mean, Aaron and I are going to be talking about more high end, stuff. more high end stuff because that's where we're at. And we've kind of covered cheaper gear and if you run a lower end camera, not sound like a total camera snob, if you're running, let's say a $500 camera, pretty much any $500 camera, they're all going to be pretty close to the same. Just like any $3,000 camera could be pretty close to the same. It's more going to be your personal preference, um, whether it be the looks or what someone told you or anything else. But if you take a, a Canon 5D Mark IV a Nikon 810, a Sony A7R2, uh, for photography, for example, I can sell you on any and all of those for specific reasons. Yep. Same with video. I mean, and it's amazing to me, photography forums are worse, believe it or not, than hunting forums with trolls, haters, and, <laughs> and just straight up jack wagons. It is amazing yeah. to me. So, but these are some of the things we've learned, just kind of a list. Um, First and foremost, I would say is you need to always have your camera out and with you to get a good photo. I have found it very difficult to get a good photo when my camera is not with me. It just yep. makes sense. Um, I agree. I've got this um, for video. One of the things that um, he's got Wally. Uh, yeah, and I'm <laughs> always trying to um, make sure. If it, one of my pet peeves is when a guy has a camera and it's in his backpack. Uh, Aaron and I 
and like people will be like, dude, you're carrying that thing. Yes. Because that's how I use it. Yeah. Um, Aaron, we, we both use these peak design, uh, clips for various things. We have the straps. I'll leave my, my camera on a tripod and just carry it over my shoulder. This is a GoPro Hero 5, which I've relied on a lot in the last few months. I sometimes remember to turn that on. Yeah, it clips off. <laughs> it clips onto this um, Peak Designs, and I can put it on this shoulder and still draw my bow back. Um, but this little baby, you know, with one push, uh, this little Hero 5 pops on. Look at that. Dude, Just look at it. I know. And it's <laughs> here. It's mesmerizing. This it tracks well. I ran up that trail. Yeah. And when I had it on, it worked. But I yeah. kept shutting it off. <laughs> but uh, on the back screen, it'll you can see actually what you're filming on the Hero Five. It's fairly the Hero Five itself can go underwater without a cage on it. Uh, the audio, um, just as soon as the water drains out, you're 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 getting decent audio. Um, and then again, it I can leave it on and I can clip it right in. And run around like Aaron hiked with this and it shows first person view. I fished with it and you could see the cast and me catch a fish. And uh, this Karma Grip kind of stabilizes it. But what's nice is it just pops in and out and I can get quick 4K video. Uh, it's not DSLR. It's not going to give you depth of field, but it's going to give you a crisp, clean 4K. It doesn't have much of a fisheye effect at all. And... Uh, I can't recommend this camera enough. Um, most of those videos that Aaron and I have put on our Facebook or our Instagram and our uh, YouTube page recently of our hikes have yeah. been uh, have been filmed with this um, Hero Five on the Karma Grip. So one button again. If I push that, it shuts the whole baby down, and then I, and I'm just hiking around. It's always ready to use in a split second. Um, and with photography or, mm -hmm. or your bigger camera, his, his clip for yep. one, and then peak design also offers a pretty, pretty handy shoulder strap. Basically, like you found a great system there for video, whatever you have to do to have that camera pretty much ready within reason, obviously there's gonna be times that you just have to put it in your pack, have it ready. Because one of the reasons I was able to catch Colton with the, the rack, almost stabbing them in the, you know, the hang down. And I have my camera out, ready to go. Um, some of the things Brian's caught, dumb stuff, me doing, the camera's out. So right. I would say the first thing is you have your camera Yeah, ready and that time. peak designs will go on your uh, belt. belt on your backpack or on your belt on your waist. And you can clip the camera into the side there. And you'll see guys with a strap for redundancy hanging loose with it also on their belt on their waist with a heavy lens yeah, big, ha hanging big, off big lenses and yeah. uh they can pop that off and and shoot stuff right away now if it's again if it's in your pack um you just you're gonna miss so much opportunity to, to film and cell phone and photos photo. do not count <laughs> ever ever never oh. patrick smith patrick <laughs> used to hand me aaron you'd be proud of me to hand me a cell phone i'm like <laughs> Those are a thumbnail, buddy. Not going in the catalog. <laughs> Thanks, so. though. Um, but then, but uh, although uh, phone, uh, phones can do some impressive stuff now, they're getting way better now. Yeah, yeah. they're getting pretty amazing. Um, but uh, they even if, give me bokeh. Yeah, some I'm of them. Like, yeah, I mean, they even blur the background and DSLR kind of. They, they are getting. Look. They are definitely getting better. <laughs> um, but number two would be learn your camera. Um, we've talked about this before, but not just learn. Um, your camera, but learn how, what each setting means on the camera, but definitely learn your own personal camera. In the case of, um, the, the Sony's, which we'll talk about much more in depth later, the A7R2 function system and format system just kind of sucks. The Olympus ODEM1, even worse. I mean, like you're like a PhD to, to learn to operate that thing. So, you know, when you, when I say learn your camera, set it up for yourself. If there's custom settings, do your own flavor. Yours is set up different than mine. His is for video. Same camera, basically. Learn your camera, familiar with your camera, and then learn how each setting works with that. Um, and and I would recommend tutorials. You know, find one. I like, like I've mentioned before, Michael the Maven. Um, there's YouTube ones that are free. Yeah, uh, I've got 11 channels I've subscribed to of guys mm -hmm. that I like. And they may all say the same thing. So more or yep. less, but everyone's going to have their own special sauce and, and may give you a different perspective on something. And the other one I've been watching lately is who is Matt. And he walks through my Sony a seven, 
uh, S2. He walks through every menu setting on there and talks about what each one does. Um, Fro knows is, uh, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. and, uh, so there's a bunch on there. Um, and if you're bored, read the comments because there's <laughs> haters on photography right. too. And there's some funny stuff that goes on there, but, uh, learn your camera. Yeah. Um, neck two goes kind of along with the last one, but don't shoot in auto. Make sure get all your different settings, learn them or whatever. Never shoot in, in auto, uh, be familiar with everything. So kind of redundant, but, uh, number three, um, Learn to read, in my opinion, this is vital. Learn to read your histogram. Learn what the histogram does. I think the histogram, personally, for photography uh, has saved me numerous, numerous times when, the, for example, the sun's out and I'm looking at the screen and I can't see the actual photo very well, but I can read the, hist- read the histogram. And a lot of people, um, there's a lot of false info I found on a histogram if you asked me two years ago, a year ago, six months ago, you just want the happy bump in the middle on the histogram. And you'll learn when you study it, you'll learn what that means. That is 100% true. When you really learn the histogram, you also learn what it should look like in very low and very bright shots. Meaning if you're shooting um, a black dog um, in a shaded area, mm-hmm. the histogram is going to be maxed to the left. But when it is maxed to the left, you're going to learn it well enough to know what that it should look like to where you still have usable data in that photo. Same with thing with, with white. So learn the histogram, learn what it does, and learn how your settings adjust it and where you, where you want them, which is actually probably, if not as important, maybe more in, in using the histogram in your videos. Yeah, I, 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 I've been using the histogram for photography. I, I, I rarely use it in video. Yeah. Uh, and in video, I'm I almost always use the exposure meter. Yeah, which just, is just me. Yeah, no, well, no, it's kind of some of the same, kinda same thing. Inversely related. I yeah. Mean. Yep. For sure. Um, and on that note, I would say too, as far as what works best for you, um, when you find your own special flavor of photography or videography, everybody has their own brand. I have kind of an archaic look um, on what I do. Um, Make sure uh, you can set when I when when I going back. You can learn your you know know your camera. There's also custom settings on that camera where you can kind of preset your own flavor. You do it on video. Yep. Um, where oh you yeah. Get presets. So learn, yep. learn your pre learned how to set up your presets. And we'll as well. we'll get into that later when we talk about exactly how we run our with the settings we use. Yep. Um, Let's see. Oh, post-production, um, meaning Lightroom and Photoshop. In my opinion, it is a must. You have to have some to- – I don't know any photographers that can take perfect photogra- per- perfect photos without some help in post. You can take good photos. If it's cloudy, you get real close. But Where do people learn that, dude? Uh, Lightroom, same thing, YouTube. Yeah. Just I mean, YouTube. believe it or not, I, I actually uh, went to a class to-, to learn it at the local college here because I was – it is so in depth that, and I would forget. Um, I would watch and then come back and watch, and I learned quite a bit. But um, with Lightroom or Photoshop, I suggest for photography you use Lightroom first. Photoshop is way more difficult and offers a lot of things most people don't use. With Lightroom, it, I think it's more user friendly, um, and you can learn quite a bit just by screwing with it. You don't even know what you're doing; you're just moving some dials. You can learn stuff, but mm-hmm. uh, learn post processing. Um, and, and, and my suggestion, I guess, for photography would be Lightroom. So, Aaron, do you subscribe to the Creative Cloud, or did you just buy Lightroom? I just bought Lightroom. Lightroom. If you if you subscribe to the, it's Adobe Creative. Is it Creative Cloud? Yep. Yeah. You can get like a package, which I I actually Kafaru got for me once. But you can get a package. It's nine ninety nine a month for Lightroom or Adobe mm-hmm. Creative Cloud, or I think you get a deal. It's ninety nine a month or a year if you pay for the. Whole I think year. it's fifty dollars a month for. Um, Adobe Premiere for video editing, and then also Lightroom and uh, Photoshop and a lot of those. So, uh, um, but Lightroom, um, if you just want that, but if you're talking video, Lightroom isn't going to help you. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> uh, subscribing to Adobe Cloud. I think again, Creative Cloud. You you get all the suite of all these options, and I think right now I'm subscribed at fifty bucks a month, and I've got access to everything on even Adobe Illustrator and other things. So, yeah. Um, it, it's, it, 
I, it's as important as having your camera, in my opinion. It, it is is very important. Well, if you don't, I mean, it's really tough if you're doing cinematic kind of stuff with a DSLR for video. Um, you know, it's you, you have to have some kind of NLE to edit your 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 content. Yep. So, I I use I've been using Final Cut Pro for, uh, for since I started, and uh, now I'm using Adobe Premiere for probably 30% of my work as I'm trying to be able to use both. Yeah. And, and leading in from, from that into the next would be shoot in the highest resolution you possibly can, or, or meaning you want to shoot in raw. If you're, if your camera offers that, and we're talking about high end cameras here, make sure you shoot in, in raw, uh, not JPEG. Look that up. If you don't know what that is, figure it out in your case, 4k. Yep. Um, I'm, 4K. I shoot everything in 4k now. And 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 the, and the easiest way to explain that, if you have this sheet of paper and this is your photo, when you shoot in RAW, there is so much data in this photo that it allows me in post processing to adjust and tweak it. Pretty the simple yeah. way to explain it. Four K is the same way. Yeah, because the computer is going to say, "Is this?" It's going to give you like uh, a thousand shades of green to choose from if it's in RAW. To, yeah. to change that green bush to the perfect color of green you want. And, and this is where, when you hear people say image quality, um, this camera is 6% better than this camera in image quality or whatever, all that really breaks down to in, in, in reality is what you can do to it in, in post and how big you can yep. blow it up. So in video, you can, um, you can kind of run in different settings that are like a raw Mm -hmm. and capture even more data so you can and you can color grade it and color correct it in and post crop too which is yeah and then you can also crop so you know um when you go ahead and take a, a big 4k image and you crop it so you zoom in and you and you you publish that in 1080p let's say um you don't really lose any resolution but your your elk that was just in the top corner of the screen can now fill the screen when you crop in in it in post. And, and 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 if you do that in a photo or in video without shooting in raw or not, without having all that data, your photo or your video just goes to sh crap. It's yeah. really grainy. It, the clarity is not there. Where the more data in that photo, the more you can crop and still remain, still have a very usable, happy looking, cool photo with a yep. lot of. Um, and it's cool because you can film f this. Station your camera can be on a tripod and film an elk in a field that top, walks from the the left hand corner of the field on this mountainside down to the right hand corner, and then when you crop it, you can crop in on that elk and actually follow it across the screen. All people see is the camera movement following the elk, um, but all of that happened in post. I didn't use the camera in the field to do that. Mm -hmm. So you you can do all this kind of editing stuff. You have these options with 4K. Plus, it just it's just cleaner. Yeah, yeah. So after that, I would say don't, which I got caught up in this initially, other than for practice, don't take the same photo. I won't speak for video, but don't take the same photo everyone else is taking. I'm not talking about grip and grins. Everyone takes those. Don't go to Maroon Lake and the Maroon Bells and take the same photo or whatever. One of the things that's, that's made some of my photography unique is the places that I go. There are places that, there probably hasn't been too many photos taken. Different perspectives as yep. well. Um, you know, different different angles, different um this could actually go on just this section for about an hour. But either way, make it find your own style, take your own photo, make sure you get unique perspectives on it, and don't take the same photo everyone else is taking all the time. And I, I don't know with video, what do you what do you think? Um I think the same thing that that um I'm always I even take a list, a shot list, mm -hmm. where I write down, and I've been tr keeping a list of, of it sounds, it, it'll be corny, but a shot list to remind me of all the different angles mm -hmm. and, and perspectives to try to capture. Gotcha. And so some of that, uh, I might say, you know, get it, make sure to get a shot straight down yeah. from a ledge or on top of a cliff as someone walks by, or one uh, 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 going straight up as someone walks over like a GoPro or something, or feet as they're walking through and you know these little short clips that are very um 
that give a lot of texture yeah and make you feel like you're you're inches from the ground ground or it makes you kind of feel to me like you're there yeah so if you're just filming everything from far away you're you you just don't um it's just a flat boring film yeah but if you get like you said if it like like with photography if i'm out there and i'm filming all these um you know motion shots where the camera's sliding left the camera's sliding right it's panning up and a lot of times what looks good on video is a reveal shot so there's like a tree and the camera is you know the camera is moving and there's something in the foreground and there's something in the background mm -hmm. your subject in the background the sub the, the the item in the foreground is a little bit blurred out maybe yeah and it's moving across and then it reveals the person in the back yep and all of that stuff gives the the Mo more motion gives depth to the shot. Um, it makes the the shot way more interesting. And so you you can kind of look up some of that stuff on YouTube and get ideas ideas for it. But for photography, it's your your photo composition, how you're setting up the shot is what he's what I call it for mm -hmm. photography. And it it you, it does get hard to come up with new stuff. The in Alabama, I, I had an ant walk over my leg and just thought, I wonder what it looks like in his view. And then I took a photo of mm -hmm. me just sitting there and you've got my bino harness and then straight up the tree to the canopy. It's, it's not revolutionary and I didn't reinvent the wheel, but it's kind of a unique perspective it was a cool of, shot. Of, of what I was doing at that time. So, um, you know, get, there's something to think about. Yeah, get creative and play with all that stuff. And I, I think that um, the more shots you can capture that are unique and you piece them together. And the other thing that I've seen is a guy will kind of use the same shot over and over again. Mm -hmm. So he's got like tons of this one shot that he really likes and he'll come back from a hunting trip and it's like, and you go to edit that video and everything is panning left to right, revealing something from behind us, another object. Yeah. And it's like, well, maybe you should have panned up and yeah. down. <laughs> maybe you should yeah. have, you know what I mean? Like, so when you, the other thing that I've read and I've seen done is, um, you know, if you have an image on your on your video that's panning left to right often it feels good to have an an, an the next cut pan right to left yeah. and they kind of bump into each other um there's certain or panning up and down or you have a rack focus where it zooms where uh this subject um like on a rifle scope yeah. you, you you might have the uh back of the rifle scope in focus yeah and then and then everything's blurred out and then the focus point moves down the rifle scope and to like maybe the vortex logo or something yeah. on the actual scope or whatever it is, some detail you're trying to highlight. And, uh, so varying those shots using all the different, all the different techniques to, to get nice motion and, and, and a, and a, a varied shot allows you to throw those clips together and keep it very, very interesting. And and some people, I will say, have it naturally. Uh, Frank, the tank, he's got an eye for photos. He just, he's, mm -hmm. he's taken some amazing photos that, that other people would have looked over. You're the same with video. Um, if you aren't naturally good at it, just remember, if you look at something and it looks cool, stop and take a picture of it because yeah. it probably does. And that's where I think uh, Cal, um, um, from uh, First Light Cal, that, yep, the Callahan. standing in the road. Yeah, uh, yeah, with the rifle and the moose hunt. Yeah, we were miserable when I took that photo. Dude, that that tree, raining, that road, the trees, all the way they were. I just looked at it and I was like, oh man, that is an unbelievable photo. And then, of course, you have to halt the motion and hold on, Cal, let me grab my camera. But that photo is one of the cooler photos I've taken. Most people, it was just some dude standing in a road and it was foggy. But mm -hmm. looking at it, I'm like, wow, I can capture the moment. You so saw definitely, it. Yeah. I think the same is true with uh, video. You can get all these ideas. But one thing I will say, when you, tr um, sometimes, the and this isn't always true, but much of the time what I've seen is people who have spent some time behind a camera editing video mm -hmm. are better cameramen. Yeah, I would say that. I can tell you I'm better after spending some time in Lightroom because when we go in, I won't talk very long about this, but I've learned what I can do to maybe a crappy photo. When I say crappy, knowing what I can do in post or what mm -hmm. you look at constantly and what looks like a better photo and what doesn't look like as good of a photo, you learn all that in post. And you're looking at it for hours. It's ingrained mm -hmm. in your brain more so with 
I can edit a thousand photos yeah. fast, like you are stuck behind that thing forever. Well, so. when I get a video and uh, and and I I start dropping it into my timeline to to make a sequence, dude, it can be a nightmare when I get back and I've realized I'm missing the shot I need, or this would have you know really helped me continue the sequence or tell the story a lot better and I don't have it or where I've screwed up the shot. Um, and now when I go back, I don't make that same mistake, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. once it, it, because of the n- headaches from editing and editing and editing, and especially true with audio. Like a lot of guys have asked about h- how we're, I'm capturing audio and how I'm processing it and putting it into the film. Cause it's, it's, it's a tricky thing when you're using DSLR. Yeah. Uh, other than different than it, it's much different than just running a camcorder. Yeah. No. No. For sure. Um, so the the next one, it's kind of it's gonna it's uh, polar polar opposites, but it it'll make sense by the time I'm done. Shoot in the the good times for your own specific photo style. Meaning, if you're a landscape photographer and you like to sleep in. That's not going to cut it because the good times for landscape are when the sun's first coming up and the sun's going down. Uh, for example, for for most part for landscape, not always, um, or when it's cloudy or you know there's mm-hmm. different times. But the good times could be com- could for landscape photography. You're probably not going to want rain. You're not going to want a lot of sun. Whatever, whatever. But the good times, if you're kind of an adventure photographer. They're going to be the worst times, meaning snowing, someone in misery, <laughs> um, you know, they out of water, their face looks peaked, catching the moment, right? If if you are an adventure photographer, well, I would say like I'm I'm part landscape, part night, part adventure photographer. I like to have that camera out when shit has hit the fan because that is Derek stuff stuck in the cliffs. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Colton fell down, almost lost the hang down from the G5 off the ball. Things like that. So shoot in the good times. And that good time mean it could be the worst time to pull the camera out. And you're good at that for video. You pull that thing out. and There are a couple times where I didn't pull the camera out. And I just, I just so regret it. <laughs> if you don't, if you film it and you don't like it, you don't have to use it. Yep. But if, if you never turn it on, it's that moment's gone. And talk, talking about grip and grim and being creative with your shots, mm-hmm. um, that's one thing that I, I would say I'm le- more than ever, uh, I've just seen so many grip and grim photos. Mm-hmm. And in some ways, they don't feel as genuine to me because um, they're set up, they're staged. You know, it's like, okay, take your shot, take that shot. I almost today much prefer just a natural moment shot. Yeah. Where you're like standing there and you got the, your elk and you're like laughing. and The and best photo you took of me with the deer was mm-hmm. one I didn't know you were taking the photo. The one I like by far the most. Not me where I'm smiling and everything else. It's the one photo you took. I'm looking down at the deer. I'm not pulling a, you know, praying to Jesus. I'm just looking at the deer. Yeah. But dude, that was, I didn't know you were taking the photo. And I think that when you're getting those kind of shots, they resonate a little more now just because the grip and grim is, grin is so overdone. Yeah. And uh, to me... It's back to capturing the moment, telling the story, making it real. Um, and, uh, you know, with a balance, because like you said, you got Cal in the road. That was real. Yeah. But you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa stay there. Yep. And that's my next step. Now it's yeah. <laughs> kind of real. Yep. But still the same thing with video. I'll see it and I'll, I'll be like, oh, that was get back in the water. Yeah. Well, step back five more feet in the water. <laughs> Yeah. Like you t- filming you, me crossing the river. Well, yeah, when he did that, because that what I was seeing in my mind's eye and what I was getting in the photograph was not happening. Now, is the 3% difference from the fifth photo I took compared to the eighth that big of a deal? It is to me. So he had to walk back and I had to drop my butt in the water because of what I wanted. And that's not really faking it, but it, you're fudging it a little bit. Yeah. Which, but you're capturing that moment, dude. Yeah, we. it's not like we didn't cross the river, <laughs> right? right? So, right. And <laughs> I think... Living in a van down <laughs> by the river. I think that that is... Uh, to, I don't think we can overstress that enough because we've... And maybe, maybe it's because we're in tune to it, but 
whenever I see a photo shoot or I see Wait, a photo that, of a guy, that's the next part. Hold <laughs> off. Okay. We'll Aaron, okay. You fire away. <laughs> Wait, Cause it's important to me and Brian and I did not talk about this list beforehand. So I can see, I'm, I'm glad he's saying it and it, it's just, don't fake it photo in the moment. Um, because that moment, when you photo in the moment, it's going to be truer than some dude, I don't know, flying to Whistler, British Columbia, faking a photo shoot. Try to do it in the moment every time now video is the same way i mean when i say that we fudge okay mm -hmm. there's there's fudging that goes on in my photos i will yell at people moving in a low light shot like they just spilt their milk on the tv remote i'm like <laughs> stop moving because it screws up my photo it's not <laughs> like they weren't already standing by the fire i just want them to stop moving and the same with you mm -hmm. You've been like, hey, get back, lay down back on the sleeping bag. Let me get you doing that. We were we were doing it. It's not like we went and rappelled off a cliff or something, right? We, we and faked it. We were doing those things, and I think those are the most genuine and, and really pull the viewer in more. Look, I mean, when I see um, a backpack photo shoot where some people just went off, found a river, brought a deadhead with them from their house super clean faces they strap it on or they put blood all over their face yeah glitter or fake the face paint or fake yeah and then you know they're doing these epic whatever moves and you're getting they're getting these shots like oh, i've been out here for a week and i'm dying and this is such a hard climb but it's a photo shoot um um it doesn't resonate the same way as to me or, or tell the story in in a in a in a way that the real event does in the field that you're capturing. You will crush some camera gear living in the moment though. I've had five cameras go down. Yeah. I don't, I've yeah. lost two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and that happens, dude. It's just part of, uh, it's just part of life, um, yeah. uh, of doing what we do, but get the man, get the, get the, <laughs> get the photo, Capture those real moments and try to look for that that honesty in uh, in what you're filming. And then I, I don't know when I see Aaron post a photo that I didn't even know he was taking in the moment, and it goes up on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, I remember that. There's a I don't know a deeper personal uh, reward that comes from that moment of of being captured there and telling that story. Then if Aaron and I were to drive up on the hill there. And uh, take some stage shots from these different angles with our props. The photo I just posted uh, last night on Instagram, um, or you posted it, but on your your page, and, and then I shared it. That bottom right photo, which is, uh, yeah. So that's right after I missed my elk. Um, for one, I was in. I think mine went underwear, but I was definitely yeah. in my bare feet. Um, Brian got bored. Because it was so hot and he's screwing around. You were doing time, time lapses. lapses. He didn't even know I was taking the photo. Um, now, you can tell when he takes a photo of me and I'm not ready because you can see my stomach more because <laughs> I sucked it in. But um, but though that photo means a lot to me because it was a turning point. I wouldn't say a turning point. It was a breaking point for me mentally. And it's not like I talk about this. It has nothing to do with photography. But that photo reminds me of me of the point where I'm like, do I go buy a compound today? And kill an elk, or do I stick with this traditional thing and hope for the best? And that was right after all that happened. I think One that of the was worst days of hunting for me. I think that was the episode three of the that series of podcasts. Five, I think it's a five series podcast of that hunt. And uh, yeah, I've never seen you more melancholy. Oh, uh, it's bad. I mean, yesterday could have been another day where I was that melancholy. <laughs> um, it wasn't a good day for Snyder yesterday. We won't go into great detail. But I got my ass beat in combat, which is okay. <laughs> I'm I'm still a happy person. Um, but it happens. But that day was rough for me. Um, and on, that's on what road. happens, I think, when you capture real film. I was going over some film last night of my cousin Ben. After he disappears over a ridge, after this bull elk, after seven days of grueling hunting, and I just missed a bull. And it's just like, we're done. We're out of the game and we're going home empty. And, and then Ben comes walking over the hill with this stupid grin on his face. <laughs> and he's like, and he's getting closer and you're looking in the film camera and he's, as he approaches the camera, 
it's that moment where he's like, he's dead. I did it. <laughs> and you're like, what? No way. How that's did that crazy. happen? And, and, uh, that kind of video or stereo, that's, that's the stuff you want to get, you know? And, and it's hard for people to understand on my end. Last year was different. Um, cause I, I had to recurve and I hunted people are like, how can you like taking photos as much as hunting? Don't get me wrong. I like killing it. I do. But photographing someone doing that is is good to me as hunting for the most part because no one does it hardly. Not through the whole, not from beginning to end. No one films it hardly from beginning to end out faking a bunch. I mean, it's just to me, it's, it is cool to be able to get shots of that guy. It's, it's like stopping time um, for a moment and being able to hold it and put it in a book later for that guy to look at and be like, wow. I remember that. You when, know? when you shot that bull with the recurve and it goes, it turns and it goes tumbling down the hill and I, I get the camera up as fast as I can, boom, turn it on and I'm running down the hill and you, you got the bow back and you put another arrow in it and then a third arrow and this thing is, is run, and you're like fall on the ground. You're like, and the relief and the look on your, you can't recreate that moment. And it's as real and honest and raw as they come. And uh, you can't get that if you turn, don't turn the camera on. Yeah. You can't get that if if you're not. Um, Certainly can't get it if you're faking it. Um, yes. <laughs> so. And so I think that that stuff is, uh, you know, back to the, getting the shot, telling the story, getting it in the moment. That's worth a lot. And I try to make a film using B-roll and telling a story and kind of the whole thing. But at the end of the day, like with Anthony and his dad, mm -hmm. the film we did a called it's not about the horns so much of that video the best moments of that video is the genuine like interaction between father and son like you know you didn't hit it you hit a stump yeah and his dad no i hit it i hit it and, what no way you know yeah. and that interaction is just priceless and then when he actually finds that bull and just the out and out joy and excitement from you know, 70 years of, or 65 years of chasing an elk and finally getting a big bull elk is you, you those moments, uh, on film that was that I didn't, as a filmmaker, I didn't do anything. Yeah. The film was just, the camera was just on. Yeah. Right. And you captured that moment. Um, I think sometimes filmmakers and guys go out and they're trying to create this story instead of capturing moments. And I would agree with that because I can see when someone is trying to follow through on the story they've pre-created in their mind mm -hmm. compared to someone that's catching moments and then making a film out of the moments, which is, I think, where you shine. You just record a ton of different stuff, and then you already know you have the movie. You, you, mm -hmm. have, you have everything. Later on, you're just putting it all together. You may have had an idea, but yep. I don't think you had a great idea when we went elk hunting. You just filmed I, a bunch of I stuff. I have shot sequences I want, and then I have just true and honest moments where Aaron and I, maybe we're in a certain mood or another hunting buddy or whatever, where, you know, you never know what Aaron's going to say that's going to make me laugh. And yeah. so <laughs> turning the camera on and just letting it run uh, to catch that natural go golden moment is critical. Yeah. If I don't turn it on, um, and so I'm using a lot of battery. I'm using a lot of video, a lot of co video cards. Well, that's a small price to pay Yep. to capture those moments. That deer, when I miss that deer, that's been brought up to me a bunch because guys are like, what were you feeling? And I'm like, you <laughs> tell me what I was feeling. What do you think? And they're like, looks like you were humbled. And I'm like, yeah. I was like, he, cr he captured that well because I was, and we talked about it too, but mm -hmm. I was like, if you would have told me I missed that deer, I would have bet you a million dollars. I wouldn't have missed that deer, but I missed it. And mm -hmm. then we, you, you, I mean, uh, you just turn the camera on and listen to me babble and then crack some jokes. And then if you wouldn't have had the camera on, because remember I said something about, oh, and then I shot at it down here. And you're like, Aaron, your arrow's over here. <laughs> this isn't adding doesn't... <laughs> up. It, but people, one, have lived that, too. Yeah. And two, I'm like, well, I said I was a little flabbergasted. <laughs> I, I Obviously, I was. Without turning the camera on, we wouldn't have had any of that. And I watch that all the time because it's pretty funny for me because you, you caught it all on there, one. But two, it, I remember multiple times helping other guys. I'm like, where'd you hit it? 
dude, double lung. We get there. I'm like, dude, this is back behind the liver. <laughs> it's not even close. And then there's yeah. the reasons why when they come back and catching that on film is a lot of people well, can resonate with that. That goes back to, um, you know, turning the camera on and, you know, being the other part though, uh, capturing the moment in the, in the field. It's also like being real. Yeah. So I think the world today and the hunting community, especially a hunting world, people who, who have a passion for hunting, they want to see real. They're done seeing, um, some, um, propped up image of a person of what they're, you know, they, they, they actually want to see the truth and, uh, you can't handle the truth. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no, there, there are some people who can't. And and the way you present the truth, definitely, like when you, there's all this, this age old debate on whether you show the fact that you missed or you show an animal wounded that you don't find. Right? Yeah. yeah which I hate that debate because um, within reason, keeping mm -hmm. the hunting community looking good, I think the someone not stating some someone basically having an appearance that they never miss um i i think is phony which we promote we pr we try to present it like it happened as much as possible someone basically having the um i never shoot past 30 but they shoot to uh, 80 or i don't know whatever mm -hmm. i mean I think you should, within reason, keep in hunting looking in a brighter, you know, I think you don't want to make hunting look bad. Right, right. You don't want to show an animal suffering, you know, undue suffering of an animal that you, it's tough. But you, I think you can um, be real, 100% yeah. real, uh, and and tell that's, and, and still um, not, and still not offend people, yeah. and, and still make... And, and I think where it stems from is, uh, when you tell your story, you tell it from a place of humility. Yeah. You know, like. I got the shit humbled out of me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so when you, when you, when you approach it from a place of humility, you can be real, uh, because you're not letting your ego and other things get in the way of, of the truth. And you're also, when someone's, when someone watches it, I believe that they get a feel for your honest feelings on the matter. And like that mule deer in Alberta that I shot, like three times I put arrows in that thing and it wouldn't go down. I showed me shoot it multiple times. I got a couple of comments from people saying they would have preferred if I only showed the first shot. Yeah. But I would say 90% of the comments were like, I'm glad you showed all of it and yeah. that you told the truth and that you told, told the whole story about this. Yeah. I think that's bullshit. People <laughs> personally minus yeah it would have been different if it would drug out for 45 minutes and it's running around with guts hanging out right it would last 15 seconds yeah well it was it was a few minutes i mean he we ran around the corner got it put another oh, no, arrow I mean, uh, down on your video what was oh, that whole thing? yeah yeah it was 15 20 seconds or yeah whatever. it was short um i got comments you got more than i did a few why did you show the last shot on your your elk yep yep I just, I thought it should have been in there because truly one, it, it kind of shows with the recurve, some of the stuff I've been talking about where you can go Winchester, right? You, mm -hmm. I was so nervous. I probably didn't need it. You didn't have to post it, but I had a lot of recurve shooters get a hold of me and say, dude, man, after this story and they'll tell me a story, I always put a final one in or whatever and good, bad or whatever. It definitely recreated and was exactly what, what happened. So. It's, it's tough. And each, each filmmaker has to make that call. And for me, and you know, it's certainly not something that I'm like glorifying. I, I feel like I'm just, no, it's, I don't think definitely it's do just that. part of this, this, it's still, it's just part of hunting. And I want to make sure people have no illusions about it. Yeah. But also, I think that they can tell from the way you tell your story and what you put in it that you have tremendous respect for the animal. Um, and that, uh, you know, but it's, but dude, for me, it's, man, it's, uh, it's hunting's gritty. Yeah. You yeah, know, it's sure. messy. You just, and I want people to realize that. I don't want people to go, oh yeah, it's the cleanest thing ever. Like every animal just drops within seconds of a double lung shot and doesn't know what happened. Yeah. Right. That image doesn't do us a lot of good, I think. So in this filmmaking space, photography, capturing the moment, being real, uh, balancing that with, yes, the public perception of hunting um, is important. And maybe maybe we're a little on that other side sometimes, but 
I, I feel like uh, we show due respect for the, the animal in the, in the wilderness and what we're doing uh, while also being completely honest and real about it. No, no, I, I agree. Um, and uh, we should probably move on because yes. we promised each other we wouldn't do that. We just did it. So, <laughs> um, so the, the next one, invest in experience as much as you've invested in your gear. Uh, I have met a lot of people recently because of the photography trend that's kicking off or videography, that, that, which I think is great. They bought a, a new camera, but their, uh, their experience and knowledge levels here and their camera level is here, meaning they dropped eight grand on the camera and they're shooting on full auto and, and literally have no idea. So make sure your experience is in line at least mm -hmm. or, or getting close to the, the dollar amount you put into your, your gear. Uh, it's very important, I think. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I mean, Aaron and I are where we're at today because of s being self-taught by the internet. So, yep. uh, and then finding people like Aaron, who's teaching me photography and I'm teaching him some things and, you know, getting the instruction and learning. I, and Tyber Namath was, uh, he did the Vortex photo shoot, mm -hmm. spending two days with that guy who is one of the great photographers around catapulted me forward yes at an unbelievable level two days with him just watching asking questions so it's it's not like same here yeah i mean you know you hang out I with, did it with grady and, yep. and uh film school is only two days i think people who went to that film school most of them would say the same thing that it catapulted them into another level of of skill by hanging out with someone just for a few days yeah, you know, it's, in, it's important. So um, the next one, some of these are a little bit redundant, but they ring true to me. Don't ask questions uh, to people that you can research and learn on your own um, because you will, researching and learning it on your own will stick in your brain rather than the easy out, meaning, uh, hey, Aaron, what does ISO mean? Or, or this podcast. Mm -hmm. It's good to listen to the podcast or I can understand asking a simple question, but you also have to understand Google is a very powerful thing that we didn't have that long ago. And if you learn it on your own, whether it be me messing with your camera or researching it, I think it sticks in your brain better. And I'm only speaking with this from experience where I was thinking asking these questions to people would magically just make me a better photographer. What made me better was grabbing the camera, learning what the hell it meant, and then taking it out and applying it and learning it that way. It stuck where... You can explain to a guy how to shoot a bow. He's not going to go pick it up at the shop and shoot it very good. He's going to need to practice and learn. Um, I think it's probably more important with mm -hmm. it. I can get away with a lot more, I feel, in photography than than true high-quality videography. Uh, you have to work at it more, I think, mm -hmm. in video. So, um, number there, the next one would get a tripod. This should have been earlier in the list. Um, it goes without saying for video, but you're going to have to have a tripod of some sort, no matter what, to shoot in less than perfect lighting conditions. There's there's just no way around it, amongst many other things, zooming out, everything else. But you're going to need to try, you have to have a tripod in your arsenal to to, to capture the moment, be a good f photographer, videographer. And in our case, we got four of them, left, yep. five of them laying around. I know some guys that have more. Um, purchase the gear that goes along with your specific shooting style. Um, meaning if you're a wildlife photographer, you're going to want a high frame rate. Um, you may want, you know, you're going to probably want something in that, you know, higher megapixel count to be able to crop when needed and still have a lot of quality in the photo. Um, if you're a backpacking uh, type of a guy and you're not so worried about the frame rate, the Sony's are a great option. Um, you know, they, they're, they're just a monster when it comes to um, 42 megapixels, the A7S II nighttime monster thing. Just, But those cameras, if you were photographing a, a football game or birds flying, they won't work as well as like a Nikon D810, a, a Canon 1DX Mark II, something like that. Purchase what fits your style, not what someone else's style is. So you want to make sure, otherwise you, you basically piss away a lot of money is what, yeah. what happens. Same with lenses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not on the list as far as lenses go, but I can tell you, you can piss away a lot of money on lenses for no reason. <laughs> like, you, I have found yeah. most videographers or most photographers can get away with two lenses, maybe three for what they do. Um, they may want more, they may mm -hmm. have more, but... 
two to three lenses, you're golden. I mean, I'm a prime guy. I need a wide angle. Um, I need a 35 or a 50 for my walk around lens. And then I need basically like an 85 millimeter or so portrait lens. For me, that does it. That does the camp shots. That does the height. You know, they're fast lenses. You can figure that out later what that yep. means. But bokeh, things like that, that I want to, whether it be a flower or an ant or whatever else, uh, and the landscape. Where Brian, you're needing more in the 70 to 200, 1 to 4 you're needing a bigger, you're, you're yeah. filming. You need something completely yeah. different. Um, and then uh, the last one, basically, which we've already covered a million and a half times, but capturing the moment, all of this goes together in capturing it. I, I know it's redundant, but you can't, if, 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 if you're trying to capture that moment and you don't know how to function your camera, all the camera functions, you can't capture it. If you know how the camera functions work, but then you don't know how to compose a photo, you're not getting it. It's one big giant puzzle that all needs to go together. And, and that's the way I look at it um, mm -hmm. is, is basically everything works in continuity in the different parts and pieces. And if you don't know it all, or you're not striving to learn it all, you're, you're probably going to screw something up. You know, so you definitely want to try to achieve that anyway. Yep. What do you think? I think good. we covered I think more than we probably should have. But. <laughs> no, I think that's that's good. That's a, a good overview of kind of, no, I think we should get into the more detailed stuff. Yep, um, yep, for sure. Next one. So hopefully, um, you know, that's useful. Yeah, I'm sure folks. people will post up stuff we forgot or your own different experiences, but uh, those are some of the bigger ones that I remembered. So, yeah, let's kick it on to the next portion. Okay. Stay gritty. The future of public lands. All of us own them. All of us use them. Political activists are demanding us to hand over the public lands where the state's legislators could transfer and control these lands. U.S. citizens own 640 million acres of public lands, which creates 6.1 million jobs and generates $646 billion per year. States have been selling off land to pay bills for over 100 years, thus closing access to the public. 39% of original 64 million acres have been sold. The cost of land management would break most state budgets. For instance, who will pay the hundreds of millions of dollars to fight major wildfires each year? It doesn't matter how many promises are made. The financial reality is it will force states to have to sell off our public land. President Theodore Roosevelt said, we must preserve our lands for future generations, not merely to the people now alive, but to the unborn people. Our duty to the whole bids us restrain an unprincipled present-day minority from wasting the heritage of these unborn generations. <laughs> 